Hello and welcome. You're watching We On. I'm Mr. Kavirendra. And first up, let's take a quick look at the headlines. Well, first up, the crisis in Maldives continues to deepen. A day after a state of emergency was declared, President Abdullah Yamin ordered the arrest of five key figures, including former President Maimouna Gayoum, Chief Justice Abdullah Saeed, Justice Ali Hamid and Judicial Administrator Hassan Saeed late on Monday. While well, the arrested Supreme Court judges were taken out of the capital, Malay, and moved to a detention facility, this is the second time in three years that a state of emergency has been declared in the country. Meanwhile, the joint opposition parties have vowed not to accept the emergency, terming it unconstitutional. The opposition argued the constitution does not allow the suspension of the judiciary and the parliament even during a state of emergency. The crisis engulfed the Indian Ocean archipelago nation after Maldives government refused to comply with the Supreme Court ordering release of political prisoners, including the former president, Mohammed Nasheed. The country's apex court had also termed the 2015 trial of Nasheed as illegal. Tension has gripped capital Malé as opposition activists hit the streets, protesting imposition of emergency. The United Nations and several countries have urged the Maldives government to respect the court order, but the government, led by President Abdullah Yamin, has refused to budge, saying they don't believe that the Supreme Court ruling to release the political prisoners can be enforced. However, the government has released Faris Mamoun, the son in the son, in fact, of ex-president Mamun Abdul Gayum. The opposition, in the meantime, has hinged its hopes on Mohammed Nasheed, who remains in exile in Sri Lankan capital, Colombo. Nasheed has described the current situation in the country as a coup and asked President Yamin to resign. There are reports where President Yamin is looking to sack Supreme Court judges. These reports emerged last night, in fact. And early this morning, the Chief Justice as well as other judges of the Supreme Court were sacked. Meanwhile, former President Mohammed Nasheed has called on India and the United States to intervene to resolve the crisis in the island nation. Nasheed tweeted, and I quote, On behalf of Maldivian people, we humbly request India to send envoy, backed by its military, to release judges and political detainees, including President Gayoum. We request a physical presence and the U.S. to stop all financial transactions of Maldives regime leaders going through U.S. banks. Well, a major political crisis in Maldives as uh, the president has declared a state of emergency. Multiple opposition leaders, including the former President Gayoum, has been arrested. His son-in-law is also behind bars. Supreme Court judges, including the Chief Justice, have been put behind bars. Police chiefs have also been arrested. Maldives are drawing widespread condemnation from across the world, which includes India, US, Canada, UK, France, have all urged the Maldivian president to follow democratic institutions to abide by the Supreme Court order that had found conviction, terrorist conviction against former President Abdul Nasheed and his party members as illegal and had dropped the conv convictions. And while we have some big breaking news just coming in, uh, the Indian government has issued a statement on the situation in Maldives calling the arrest of the Chief Justice and Opposition leaders a matter of concern. The statement has said uh, that the Indian government is disturbed by the decision to impose emergency. Well, uh, for the past one day, uh, there were speculations as to what India will do with being a neighbor and with many leaders, when many opposition leaders, including the former President Nasheed, urging India to act. Questions were raised as to what sort of action will India really take. And now we understand that India has issued a statement where it has termed the ongoing situation in Maldives as disturbing. The Indian government has issued a statement on the situation in Maldives calling the arrest of the chief justice and opposition leaders a matter of concern. 
but whether this will really amount to any action against uh, the Maldives president or against the Maldives government is something that we have to wait and see. Many speculations during the rounds, but as of now, India playing a very cautious wait and watch game. But uh, this particular statement from the Indian government certainly something to look into where it has uh, gone out and termed the ongoing situation in Maldives as a matter of concern and an extremely disturbing situation that emergency has been imposed. This is the second time that emergency has been imposed in the last three years in Maldives. Well, how exactly will India intervene, whether there will be political dialogue? Well, references have been drawn to India's previous major interventions, which includes Operation Cactus. But when it came to Operation Cactus back in 1988, it was at the invitation of the incumbent president that India had acted and overnight sent almost 1,600 troops. But this time around, India's action is extremely unclear. So far, India has been watching and waiting, seeing how the world is reacting to the situation in Maldives as to whether India really should intervene in the ongoings of a sovereign country like Maldives. But uh, India has finally reacted, going on to state that the situation in Maldives is extremely concerning. It is a matter of concern. And the fact that the state of emergency has been imposed in Maldives is a disturbing development. Well, India has been one of the close associates of Maldives. And despite Maldives' growing attachment to China, it has maintained that relations with India are its foremost concern. So will we see India acting as a sign of India taking any action to intervene in the Maldives political crisis is something that we have to wait and see. But as of now, India has uh, reacted, giving out a statement saying that the situation in Maldives is extremely disturbing. And the fact that uh, a state of emergency has been imposed is a matter of concern. Well, this comes in the backdrop of uh, President Yamin's government suspending the Supreme Court and putting security personnel behind bars as well. well Ramesh Ramachandran uh, now joins us uh, from the Vyond newsroom to give us more perspective on it. Well, Ramesh, will they, won't they? Uh, big questions and debates surrounding what India's action will really be regarding the Maldivian crisis. Now that the statement has come out where India has termed the developments as disturbing and a matter of concern, um, can we expect some sort of intervention from India? Well, uh, if the statement is anything to go by, uh, Nishchita, India clearly seems to be disturbed, as you mentioned, about the emergency declaration in the Maldives. Also, India is saying that is monitoring the situation very closely. But that said, it's a catch-22 situation for India. If it intervenes, it will be seen as interference in the domestic affairs of the country. If it does not intervene, India will be seen as you know, standoffish uh, and not coming to the aid of a neighboring country. So it's a difficult moment for India, and India is uh, watching and waiting and observing very carefully and closely and interacting with all stakeholders in the Maldives and outside as well. But uh, Ramesh, now many references have been uh, drawn uh, India's previous interventions with not just Maldives but also its other neighbours. But in this particular situation where the president himself has uh, imposed emergency, has put uh, the Supreme Court judges behind bars, has put the opposition leaders behind bars, uh, what is really the possibility of India taking a moral stand here and deciding whether what is going on in Maldives is right or wrong and whether it needs our intervention at this point? Well, as things stand at the moment, Nishita, India has very little elbow room in uh, uh, you know, managing the developments in the Maldives. And our present Yamin, Abdullah Yamin of the Maldives, draws his power from the military. And so long as the military sides with him and continues to side with him, uh, one cannot expect any dramatic uh, change in the situation in the Maldives. But that said, anything can happen between now and the 15-day period ends of the emergency. Uh, until then, uh, the opposition leaders can be accepted with mount pressure, continuing pressure on the presidency of uh, President, uh, uh, President Yamin, especially given the possibility that uh, his foes, both Nasheed and former President Abdul Gayum, will be joining hands and the resources to mount a stiff opposition and possibly impeachment of the president, uh, given the majority in the House, uh, in, in, in Maldives Parliament.
Right, uh, Ramesh, stay with us. We'll come back to you in just a bit. Well, this is the latest update, in fact, that we're tracking this hour where India has released a statement uh, where India has mentioned that it is disturbed and uh, it is extremely concerned about the situation in Maldives at the moment. Uh, let's not forget that it has been a day since the Maldives plunged into a state of emergency uh, following the declaration by uh, the Yamin government after the Yamin government refused to abide by the Supreme Court order that let go and ordered the release of uh, convicted former president uh, Abdul Nasheed. Abdul Nasheed had been convicted in terrorist charges along with him. Many of his party members were also convicted and those charges were lifted by the Supreme Court of Maldives and uh, this development came as quite a shocker for the Yamin government as the Yamin government had handpicked the Chief Justice for the job and now the Chief Justice along with several other judges of the Supreme Court have been sacked by the Yamin government. Well, uh, Ramesh, now coming back to you, as far as uh, the Maldivian government is concerned, uh, is there any clarity on what their stand is as of now? What do they plan to do next, especially considering the fact that there has been uh, widespread condemnation to the existing situation, not just from India, but across the globe? Well, from President Yamin's perspective, Nishita, he wants full authority and overriding powers on both judiciary, the police and the other uh, wings of the executive government, as it were. And he maintains that uh, he is well within his rights to impose emergency and clamp down or to curtail the rights of the people and the agencies involved. But that said, this is constitutionally untenable. Uh, many reporters and uh, sources are telling me on that this situation cannot last for long and that there has to be some modus vivendi between the Meris uh, Dramatis Personae in this uh, drama, as it were, between uh, President Yamin on the one hand and the opposition, the combined opposition at that, between uh, President, uh, former President Nasheed and former President Abdul Gayoom. Uh, but that said, as things stand now, as long as the military is uh, firmly entrenched with the presidency, one should should not expect any dramatic change in the development obtaining in the Maldives as we speak. Right, uh, Ramesh. Well, thank you for joining us uh, with all that information. We'll continue to track all the latest developments as and when it happens as far as the Maldives uh, political crisis goes. But as of now, the situation stands that uh, the Yamin government is demanding absolute control over the judiciary, over the executive, as well as over the security forces, saying that he is well within his rights to impose an emergency at the moment. And moving on now, India has been the largest troop contributor to United Nations mission since its inception. So far, India has taken part in 43 peacekeeping missions and Weon is on ground zero exploring what it takes for the Indian Army personnel to serve on foreign land. Weon is the only channel covering the Indian peacekeeping troops in the Democratic Republic of the Congo.
Well, Vyans Kartikesh Sharma also joined the UN peacekeeping forces as they traveled to forward bases in Congo. He spoke to Major Pranay Kale during the chopper ride and asked him about the mission and its challenges. So I am on my way to Rivindi. Rivindi is in Congo, as you can see, the helicopter is uh, taking a turn uh, towards its left and shot by a Major Pranay Kala, who is part of the night mission peacekeeping force. Uh, Pranay, how challenging, adventurous and difficult is the task of peacekeeper in uh, Congo? It is a very challenging and uh, difficult task per se. But the training that we get in our own army back in our country land, the experiences that we have makes it very easy for the Indian peacekeepers to operate and work in Congo under the United Nations. Of course, it has its own challenges of cultural differences, language barriers, the change in dynamics, the situation, and the political turmoil, the frequency with which the situation changes over here. But we are one of the best forces under the United Nations Missions which is doing a very, very good job, a remarkable job that we are doing and which is also widely recognized by the uh, the locals over here as well. Uh, Pranay, you know, uh, one thing I would like to ask you, how do you balance between the locals and the Congolese army? Because when it comes to uh, Congolese army, uh, they are not very professional and locals have their own expectations from uh, UN. So how do you balance those uh, counter aspirations, training the army and maintaining the interest of the local community? Well, it is a very challenging task per se because as per the UN mandate, we are supposed to be helping the local army, the Congolese army with their training. We are also supposed to help them with a bit of operations per se. But, uh, you know, if we help them openly, then we also might be creating dissent among the local people. There might be armed groups which think that we are against them, you know, helping the local army. But then they, we have to strike a very fine balance where we have to respect the sentiments of the people, take care of the sentiments and at the same time help the Congolese army raise their standards so that they can take care of their own country themselves. But you know, the bottom line here is, you get the remoteness of this area. You know, Pranay, when, we, uh, when you operate here, when you come here, how does your uh, experience of the world, how does your experience of Indian military come to handy in Congo? Uh, in fact, uh, this question has been asked by a lot of... Uh, And I always tell them that the experiences that we have in our country land, be it Kashmir, be it the north or the northeast, comes in very handy because we've handled situations like this, we handle locals like this, the welfare measures that we do, the kind of operations that we're doing, the kind of recce mission that we're doing even now are similar to what we've done back in our country land. So we are amongst the most experienced people to be here in Congo under the United Nations. So you know, life is full of challenges and Major Pranay Kala is one of the faces of Indian military. He, like many others, symbolizes the exemplary vigor, professionalism and patriotism of Indian today. Or many knowledge with true caps. The camera was the police, Shavastav Karthike Sharma, from Congo, for we are. And well, the areas that Indian forces are guarding in Congo are some of the remotest on the planet. Beyond Kartikeya Sharma sends us this report as he visits a forward station of the UN peacekeeping mission in Congo. So now we are flying over the lake inward and we are going to those areas where the camps are and the camps are going to be shown like this. I will ask my camera person to keep to his left and now we are going to show you the illegal camps which are being, uh, you know, which are on the banks of the lake Edward, this is the great lake of Edward, and, uh, and the camps are on the left hand side. So, you know, these, these are the camp areas, and now we are doing a flying over these areas to give you an idea as to how the camps have been organized. Most of these areas are uninhabited. Most of these areas are so far away from Congo. And it is for this reason this trekkie has been organized. So with camera person Manish Shrivastav Kartike Sharma from Congo, for we are.